if I were to like adjust that, we'd be good to go. Can you rule that off? Leave space for a heading. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, uh, but you can make the date if you haven't already. The, uh, the heading today would be a bit of a spoiler, so I'm not going to put it on the board just yet. I'll leave that for now. Okay, so uh, we're in our second les last lesson on modeling financial situations, so we're really close, and in fact, in many ways, we've covered all of the big concepts and all of the formulas that you use. We've used the technology, even. Um, so we've covered most of the important stuff, but there is actually a little extra, which I'm going to bring us back to the syllabus so I can prove to you where this comes from, okay? And we need to have a look at a couple of very, very small scenarios, okay? So I've got a bit of a trick question for you to begin with. Let's suppose you've got an account. Uh, well, I guess it's, let's call it from the future, like so. Okay, let's suppose you've got an account, right? And uh, you, you want to open it next year, okay? So you open it up, you do all the paperwork, right? And at the moment when you open it, the bank's like, hey, you got nothing in there. That's empty, okay? And then for whatever reason, you forget about that bank account for a whole year, and you're like, oh, I have this bank account. I should probably put some money in there, because I've learned from Mr. Wu, you know, banks put in interest at the end of the year, so you wait, and then on December 30, you're like, oh, I got some, I got some money for Christmas, right? I'm going to pop it into the account, okay? Now, let's suppose it's one of those bank accounts that's, let's go with 6% interest, okay? That's a number I've been using a fair bit. If the bank is going to pay you 6% interest at the end of the year, and this is the final day of the year, what do you think you will have in your bank account the next day? I don't want you to shout an answer. I want you to turn to the person next to you or behind in front. What do you reckon the answer is? Remember, we're going at 6% interest. Have a discussion with the person around you, and then I will show you what the answer is, because it's important to what we're learning today. All right, so that, that was enough discussion time, right? So I don't want you to call out an answer, but I would like you to raise your hand if you have an answer to this question, even if you're like, eh, I'm not that confident, but I think I've got something. Hands up. I mean, it should be most of the class by now. Okay, keep your hand up. If you're reasonably, I, I'm not going to ask you, I just want to know your confidence level. Keep your hand up if you're pretty confident that, you, that your answer is right. Okay, about half the, the okay. <laughs> the longer I wait, the more the hands go down. Okay, thank you, all right. So, uh, I'm going to tell you, because I haven't given you, strictly speaking, enough information. You, you can relax, it's all right. I'm going to tell you what the answer is. Um, to the, the nearest dollar, I'm going to tell you what the answer is. And it's... $100. Now, some of you are like, what? Mr. Wu, they calculate interest at the end of the year. What's going on, right? Why isn't it $106? Now, this is a nuance that I haven't really talked about over the last couple of weeks. Some of you already knew it, know it intuitively. We've uh, kind of referenced it in the past. But even if we are calculating interest and paying it annually, Just because it is paid at the end of a year or at the end of a month or whatever compounding period it is, right? That doesn't actually mean they are only looking at it at that one point in time. They're actually checking it all the time. Most banks, it's once a day, right? They don't give you that amount of money because like, oh, hooray, four cents, right? But what they will do is they'll check to see when you put that money in. Now, based on what I've sort of illustrated here in this sort of contrived situation, most of the time, your bank, was, your bank account was empty. There was nothing in there, right? Does this make sense? So because the bank didn't have access to that money from you, like you're lending money to the bank, they're not going to pay you interest for money that they didn't have for 364 days in the year. Does this make sense? So, I mean, yeah, you'll get a day's worth of interest, okay? But actually, for most of the time, that bank account was zero, so they ain't paying you, okay? Um, think back to that question we did yesterday. Do you remember where I kind of compared, uh, it was actually not yesterday, it was a couple of days before that, uh, having $2,000 a month or a year, putting in lots early versus putting in a little bit later versus the other way around, right? The more you can get in earlier, in this case it would be earlier in the year, the more interest you'd actually get calculated, even if they only pay it once at the end of the year. Does this make sense? 
Okay, now this is very important for the actual thing that we're going to have a look at today. So I want you to imagine a really simple amount of money, which is just a dollar, okay? What I want us to do is go back to this same situation. Imagine we're not investing $100, but just one. You'll see in a moment why I've chosen such a small amount of money, okay? One dollar, I'd love us to work out what will the future value be if we invest the money like so, okay? 6% per annum, we're investing at the end of the year. I know that's a little bit different from how we've been doing it in the past. Usually we say, stick it in at the start, so you know, it can actually earn interest throughout the course of the year, okay? But let's imagine that it's actually at the end of the year, uh, the 31st, I guess, to be technically accurate. So on the final day is when we put that interest, sorry, that deposit in. Um, I'd love to know after 10 years, what's that dollar going to be worth? Do this the way that you normally would, establish the pattern, find out what that you know, geometric series is, and then I'd love for you to reach your calculator and get a number for me. Can you do that? I'll give you a few minutes. I've defined, as you always should, uh, my AN terms, right? And you didn't have to use perennials like this, I'm just lazy to write at the end of the whatever year, right? So I'm defining AN in this way. A1, we actually have the answer to this, it's already on the board, right? It's right there, a dollar, okay? Nothing happened all the way through the year because I'm imagining that I'm putting in the investment at the end, okay? So we put in that one dollar, and then instantly the interest is calculated, but because the dollar went in at the end of the year, they're like, Psh, that doesn't, you haven't given us that dollar for most of the year, right? So it just stays right there, okay? Now, what happens next? Well, this dollar, the one that we put in at the end of the first year, by the end of the second year, it's been in there for 365 days, yes? So therefore, that part is gonna get some interest on it, 6%. And then, let's use this one over here. We put in the second dollar. We're at the end of the second year. There's the second dollar, okay? By the third year, the original dollar gets another interest calculated to it. The second dollar also gets that, calculate, that interest calculated. And then here comes the third dollar at the end of the year, and then it just kind of stays put, okay? So by the final one, having a look at where our numbers are, right? The original dollar that we put in at the end of the first year, how many times has interest been applied to it? It's been applied nine times. You can just kind of follow this pattern. It's one of the reasons why establishing the pattern is so useful and writing it down in this way. It's one less than the total number of years. The next one, I guess, would have eight lots of interest and then seven. And then, because we're at the end of the 10th year, a tenth and final dollar, whoops, I should have kept the same color scheme, shouldn't I? A tenth and final dollar goes in, okay? Now at this point, um, I know what this is all equal to if I use the formula, right? So just be careful, I'm gonna do it backwards because it's easier to think about. There's A, the first term. What goes up here in the brackets? How many terms do I have here? I have 10 terms. It's easy to mistake because I end here at nine, but this one is, is the zeroth one, okay? So I should have 1.06 to the power of 10, take away one, and then we just finish off the formula like so, right? Now I asked for a calculator readout. This is 13 point what? 1A, give me a few more. 079, that'll do. I think that's enough, okay. So this value here, right? This is, uh, actually I should have written not AN, but A10. This is at the end of 10 years, what the bank account should look like for $1, okay? Now, I said before that I would tell you why I chose such a small amount. If I know what happens to $1, I can know what happens to any amount of dollars. If I change this to 100, like in our original situation, all I have to do is multiply this by 100. It goes back to that original principle of $100 in one place, earns exactly the same interest as a dollar here, dollar here, dollar here, dollar here if I had it in a hundred different bank accounts, okay? So each individual dollar can be treated independently as it were. So if I know a dollar, I know it for anything, okay? 